Savior, teach me day by day love's sweet lesson to obey. Sweeter lesson cannot be loving him who first loved me. With a childlike Heart of love, at thy bidding may I move, prompt to serve and follow thee, loving him who first loved me. Teach me all thy steps to trace, Strong to follow in thy grace, learning how to love from thee, loving him who first loved me. Good morning, everyone. It's a rainy morning in the beautiful downtown Parksville, Kentucky. We're glad you decided to join us today. We're blessed to be in, in the Lord's house as we go through another week of not being able to come together. But uh, I've heard so many positive comments by so many folks, and we're thankful you're watching. You know, last week we had over 300 and something people watching. I know that may be small numbers for some, but that's big numbers for us. So we appreciate everyone who spends the time to either watch it live or watch it later on. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, as we uh, worship today, that song, uh, thank Marcia for the, uh, the two songs. We finally uh, decided to put them up on the speakers where they could be heard a little bit better. Uh, and the other song, Savior Teach Me, uh, has a little bit of a story behind it. Uh, back in the 60s, uh, before record players were prominent, uh, Mom had bought me a 45 that had the song on the main song on it. Unfortunately, I don't even remember. Uh, but on side two was Savior Teach Me. And uh, once I got a record player in the mid-60s and was able to start playing that song, whatever was on 
whatever was on the side one, it just kind of went away because uh, I don't even remember what it was. But side two so, stuck to my heart, and it was Savior Teach Me. So we're thankful for that song this morning. If you're wondering about the way I'm dressed, I thought I would lighten things up a little bit today. Uh, red bow tie, and uh, I just thought that would lighten things up. The mood uh, seems to be more and more people are uh, more and more people are at each other's throat and getting temperament and, and all those things. So we thought we would lighten up. But there is a story behind this bow tie a little bit. Not really this one. Uh, I grew up with a dad who did not know how to tie a tie and would just refuse to learn. When he was younger, when he was younger, uh, my Uncle Paul tied all his ties for him, and he would hang them on the bedpost, and he'd just pick out whichever one he wanted and run it right up, and he was set to go. Well, later in life, my brother Jack started tying all his ties, and then later on, I did. I did. But somewhere in the middle of all that, they came up with what he called the greatest invention of all time. And that was the clip-on tie. And once that uh, was established, you, nobody had to tie ties for him anymore. That was the grandest thing. Well, about three years ago, uh, we were having a Christmas program, or a, maybe one Christmas, but a program here of some type, and I needed a bow tie. Well, I asked Brother Tommy Jackson, I said, do you have a bow tie? Yeah, yeah, I've got one. And uh, so he brought it the next Sunday or Wednesday night or whatever it was, and uh, it wasn't tied. And I thought, Tommy, how do you tie this bow tie? And uh, I think he showed me, but I didn't get it. So I didn't wear the bow tie because I couldn't figure out how to tie it. Somebody said, well, go on the internet. It shows you. You go on the internet. You go on there and let them teach you how to show a bow uh, tie a bow tie. You see how easy it is. <laughs> it wasn't easy at all. Never did figure it out. So this one here clips. So anyway, uh, enough of that this morning. We're thankful you've joined us. Uh, we've... Uh, in preparation for the lesson today, it's actually, I was overwhelmed simply because I asked the Lord to give me the correct verses to use with what he had laid upon my heart to talk about. Well, when I went to the Bible, I was overwhelmed with the number of verses that apply to our subject today. And so I had to pick out just a few. So, in a few minutes, we'll talk about the subject today is the Bible. Simply the Bible. But before we do that, we will go to the Lord in prayer, and we will uh, ask His blessings upon not only our service here, but, of course, what's going on in your life, uh, what's going on in your world, uh, those that are near and dear to you who may be sick, uh, those that have lost loved ones. Uh, we want to remember... Uh, these families also. So we're thankful today that we can bring these petitions before the Lord. Um, if there's something in your life that you would like to pray about, contact us and, and let us know, and we'd certainly be glad to do so. Uh, our prayer list, we did put it in our bulletin this week. For those, you'll probably not get those till Monday. Uh, we mailed them out uh, Friday, I think, but I don't think anybody probably got them yesterday. So you'll get those Monday, but we did have our prayer list in this week's bulletin. Uh, we hope to get back together soon. Uh, we hope to be back next week, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, so hopefully by Mother's Day maybe. And the very second we uh, they uh, give us a, an outing to, we're going to come back together. But we, we can, you know, with the amount of space we have, we can set families here, there, and everywhere. And we can social distance here as we worship together as well. So the very second we can, we'll be back together, and we'll still practice social distancing uh, up until that's no longer necessary. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Let's pray for our nation, pray for our state, uh, pray for all the arguments going back and forth about decisions made and those type things. And um, uh, my brother posted, well, he shared it on the, the internet today. Uh, on Facebook, it said, uh, uh, life is so short, let's spend all the time we have uh, arguing with total strangers about politics. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> Unfortunately, we probably spend way too much time doing those things and, and neglecting the important things. 
Birthdays, Joey's birthday is the 29th, Irvin's is the 30th. I want to remember uh, these coming up. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for our time together today. Thank you for each one who's watching this morning. We pray your blessings upon each one and their families. We pray for protection from this virus. We pray for uh, common sense in all that we do. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to worship in this manner. Several years ago, we wouldn't have been able to, so we're thankful for that, Lord. We're thankful that you hear us, you answer prayer, you're in our midst. We're thankful that, uh, that we can bring all of these that are sick before you. We can bring those that have lost loved ones in this trying time. And, Lord, we can bring uh, the, the problems of our nation and the problems that people that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, we know we can just uh, maybe vaguely imagine what it's going to be like when there's no evil and no sin in, in the world. And someday we'll experience that when we're with you. Thank you, Lord, for uh, this time today. In the name of Jesus, amen. We have a poem we're going to start out with this morning. It's about the Bible. And the thing that makes it important is the Bible not only just being the Word of God. And I'll say this, uh, the home folks will recognize as me talking about this all the time, is that any other book you read has a story. That story, uh, you can read the book multiple times. When I was in the uh, fourth grade or fifth grade at McAfee, uh, I checked out a book called Freddy Goes to Florida. It was about a pig who went to Florida. I checked that book out probably every month and reread it. I enjoyed it so much. And I know that sounds crazy. But anyway, it was so, I just loved it. Uh, I need to look that up so my uh, grandson can read it. Of course, he'll probably just throw it away. Oh, it's the corniest story I ever read. But anyway, uh, my point is, is the story was always the same. Not so with the Bible. All the great works that, uh, what's the longest book you ever read? Nobody in this audience ever probably really read War and Peace. Not all of it. But you know you always talk, laugh about that being the, the longest book. And I'm sure it's not. But anyway, uh, what is the longest book you ever read? It's always, it's always when you read it, and, or reread it, it's always the same. Isn't it? Not so with the Word of God. The Word of God is alive. It speaks directly to your heart, what you need the most when you need it. It tells you what you need to do when you need to do it. It's the answer to all of the problems in the world. It's the answer to all the problems in your life and in my life. The Bible lasts through time. The anvil, God's word. Last eve, I passed beside a blacksmith door and heard the anvil ring the vesper chime. Then looking in, I saw upon the floor old hammers war with beating years of time. How many anvils have you had, said I, to wear and batter all these hammers so? Just one, said he, and then with twinkling eye, the anvil wears out the hammers, you know. And so, thought I, the anvil of God's word, for ages skeptic blows have beat upon it. Yet through the noise of falling blows was heard, the anvil is unharmed, the hammers are gone. Think about that this morning as we turn to our first scripture. Now we're to, uh, the first scripture this morning comes from Psalms 119. Verses 160. The sum of God's word is truth. David is telling God, the sum of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. We live in an age to where there seems to be no absolute truth. It seems that truth relative to the situation. 
It seems that truth is whatever you may want it to be. But God's word is absolute truth. And it never changes. If you do not believe that, then you do not believe the Bible. It's quite simple. People pull a verse here, pull a verse there to tell them what, uh, what they want to hear. They'll read this verse to, to uh, justify something that they're doing in their life. But the Bible teaches us that the entirety is the word the New King James uses. The sum is the word the Old King James uses. Of God's word is true. All of it put together. All the story put together. Just as you and I have a conversation. And maybe some things are assumed because we know them over here. From having past conversations. So when we have a conversation we don't rehash and say everything over again. Because we already know part of it. That's the way the Word of God is. It's all together, meshed together, to be righteous and right. In line of what we just read about the anvil, we do have a, another story this morning that uh, I think you'll find interesting. Ingersoll the great inventor, held up a copy of the Bible and said, in 15 years, I'll have this book in the morgue. 15 years rolled by, Ingersoll was in the morgue. And the Bible lives on. Voltar said in 100 years, the Bible would be outmoded and forgotten book to be only found in museums. And 100 years later, Voltar's house was owned and operated by the Geneva Bible Society. Don't think for a moment that the Word of God is going to go away. Don't think for a moment that it can be outlawed, that it can be uh, uh, relic to a museum, because it is alive. Is it alive in your life? How much time do we spend studying the Bible? How much time? What does it mean to us? Someone once said, you can always tell the condition of a person's life by what a Bible looks like. Is yours shiny and new? Never hardly touched? How many have you gone through in your life? You know, when my dad passed away, we had to do, take care of all his Bibles. Well, I've got back here in the back office, back, I've got about five or six. Uh, I gave one to Miss Dora because it had very large print. She thoroughly enjoys that. You know, the Bible lives on, but the Bibles that he had, were most of them were worn out. What is your Bible like? Our first scripture this morning is going to be from Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, starting with verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from its sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. As Christians, sometimes if we stop and think about it, we will spend a lot of time weeping, not just crying, but weeping over those that are lost. The reason they rebel against the Bible or even don't want it around is because of this verse. 
Because it has the ability to change their life. It has the ability to pierce their innermost self. So many people don't want that or are afraid of that. But it is more powerful than anything you can imagine. And no creature is hidden from its sight. That should be something that as Christians we promote to the world. All of their naysaying, all of their mocking and making fun of the Christians, those who would love to close churches down permanently, those who would love to just get rid of us, well, they're going to have their way one day. Not sure they will want it. But when we think about the love of God, I would ask as homework that you would read Psalms 139. 139. I think you'll be very interested in the things that are said there concerning God and us and how special the child of God is to him. Can you imagine the creator of our universe looks down at you and me with love in his eyes and says, thank you. Thank you to himself. Thank you. Just thank you. Because we made the decision to be a child of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting with verse 10. Some of this we'll just read and we'll comment a little bit on part of it. 2 Timothy 3.10 But you have carefully followed my doctrine, Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in various places. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Paul making a statement here to young Timothy. Of everything I faced, God has delivered me. May we say that during what we face right now. We obviously, and we talked about this in the weeks past, been very spoiled the way our nation's been, the way we've been, the freedoms we've had. And we've so taken so much of it for granted. May we see now what everyone's been talking about all these years that is coming, where our freedoms may melt away in the cause of safety or whatever else. Thanks be unto God that he delivers me out of all of them. You know, and the one way of deliverance is the Word of God. How much time do we spend in it? How much do we read it? How much do we study it? You know, in our class, our uh, teenage class downstairs on, on Sunday morning in Sunday school, uh, one of the things I do is try to teach our young people how to study the Bible. You know, some people rely on commentaries. Uh, I don't have anything against commentaries, but they are man's opinion. What I would really prefer when you're studying the Bible is to get out your Bible, get out your concordance, get out your Bible dictionary, and go from place to place in the references. Put the, formulate a system of study, and of course we're trained how to do that, but we need to train ourselves on how to commit a system of genuine Bible study. It's okay to look at commentaries to see what others think. But what does God say? That's the most important thing. And one of the problems we run into today is people don't care what God says. The Bible means nothing to them. They just soon it not be around. Just to us Christians, we keep our mouth shut. Unfortunate, isn't it? Continue this our study in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Have you ever suffered persecution? Have you ever been made fun of because you go to church, because you're a Christian, because you will sing Jesus loves me, because you will have a life that focuses upon the things of God and not this world? Well, if you're very outspoken, you've been criticized and persecuted. And certainly behind your back, and a lot of times even to your face, 
Your own family may do it because they think you're crazy following some myth as, I, as I've heard the Bible uh, talked about being. Unfortunate, isn't it? See, when those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ know the truth, we know the truth about Him living in our hearts, about the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives, about constantly in contact as we pray without ceasing. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I would caution everyone, as I continue to do, about believing what you read. I would caution everyone to, even if it's been verified, quote, one thing that is certain, and I will say with certainty, is that the one true source of truth is the Bible. So regardless of what man may say, what the newscast may say, what some post on Facebook may say, or Instagram, or Twitter, or whatever, weigh it all against what God would want for you in your life. Something makes you mad on there? Is it Christian anger or is it just man anger? Are we upset because the way God is treated or maybe the way we're treated? We need to be very careful. There are evil men out there. Something I've had a hard time understanding. I always give people the benefit of the doubt or try to. But there are evil people, imposters, and it'll get worse and worse. But here's what he tells us to do. But you must continue in the things which you have learned. How do you learn them? You learn them. And this is a point to parents. From the time they were as young as they could be in Sunday school. From the time that they attended every Bible school. The time that they, at your own home you had Bible study. And then you, as you grew into a teenager and adult, the things of God were instilled in your heart. And I know that's not everybody's case. But the things you have learned, and you can't start yesterday if you haven't learned anything, you have to start today. You can't do anything about your past. The things you have learned, and where are you going to learn them from? Man or God? Well, the obvious answer is God. Well, I wish God was here so I could talk to him. Hey, guess what? He is. He wrote his word. Everything we need to know is in the word of God, the Holy Bible. And once you accept him as Lord and Savior of your life and the Holy Spirit enters your life, you have guidance. You have your commentary to learn and study the Bible. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What great words. How many Bible verses have you memorized in your day? I'm so thankful that when I was little, Agnes Lay from the Bohong congregation was my teacher. We had upon the board things we had memorized, and you got a ribbon every time you memorized the Beatitudes or the Lord's Prayer or Psalms 23. Or other verses as well. Uh, whatever it might be. And we had to come out front and recite those Bible verses out in front of the church. Did you want to? No. No way. Did you mess up sometimes? Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes. And thank you for that upbringing. Are we doing that for our kids today? Do they know the scriptures? Do you know the scriptures? One of the greatest compliments I ever had was when I first moved to Mackville. Uh, about, this would have been about 90, maybe the year 2000, somewhere in through there, and they, uh, a person in the community <clears throat> called me, did not go to the Mackville church there, 
but he, he went to another church, but he said, I know you Church of Christ people know the Bible. He said, I have questions about several verses. Now, I didn't pretend to know the Bible as well as even him. But it was that thought. Do that, people think that about you? Do you know the Bible? I would pray that you do. That from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture. You can argue and debate all day long about which books belonged in the Bible, but God put the ones there He wanted there. I am thoroughly convinced of that. All Scripture is given to you by inspiration of God and is profitable. If you never pick it up, you're not going to profit from it. If you never study it, you're not going to profit from it. It's all profitable for doctrine, meaning what does it teach? What are the basic truths of the Word of God? For reproof, when I do wrong, it tells me so. For correction, it points me in the right direction. Yes, you've done wrong. Thanks be to God for the death of Jesus on the cross, you can be forgiven of that. You are forgiven of that. For instruction in righteousness. The proper instruction based upon righteousness, the things of God. Not a secular education, which there's nothing wrong with, but one that is instilled in the things of God. That the man of God, you and me, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This morning I have, I guess, this Bible sitting up here. I have this Bible up here. There is the church Bible. It's been around for years up here. But there's no shortage of Bibles. There's probably not in your house either. How often do you spend studying it? It's alive. It can protect your life, change your life, sustain your life, and make life so much more worth living. If you have an intimate relationship with the Word of God, your Bible, what does it mean to you? In closing today, we're going to have an invitation song of sort. We sing these at the end simply to give you a chance to sit in your chair and reflect. Reflect. Is there things in my life I need to change? Is there something I need to do differently to where I can project Christ in a more positive manner? If you need help along those lines in any way, if you have my number, don't hesitate to call. We'll do whatever it takes. Regardless of the circumstances of our world, we will be there for you. This talks about a, a time in the future. And maybe in light of what's going on in our world, even the ungodly may recognize it, that it's before, sooner rather than later. Think about your need this morning as we close with this song. When this passing world is done, when I sunk yon glaring sun, when I stand with Christ on high, looking o'er life's history, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then how much I owe. When I stand before the throne, 
glass, darkly let thy glory pass. May forgiveness feel so sweet, may thy spirit's help so meet, even on earth, Lord, make me know something of how much I owe. Our Heavenly Father, as we close this service today, thank you. Help me to know how much I really owe, and I don't think we ever really can. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross so that we may have eternal life. Thank you for the Bible, your holy word. Thank you so much that you've given up it, us as a, as a book to follow. It's not a guideline. It's not merely suggestions, for you are the truth. The sum of your word is truth. There is no argument against it. Thank you, Lord, for its entirety, for its surety. Thank you, Lord, for this service today. Bless the families that are watching. Protect them from the virus. Protect them from harm. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.